Today we're going to create a utility called grep. Actually partially create a utility called grep. The original Unix grep utility did a lot more things than just what we're doing with this version. But in this version we essentially search for a file name in a directory that contains a specified string which as it turns out is an extremely useful thing to do if you're looking for some kind of specific file. And it's a two-phase process. First you need to select the directory you want to look for the file in. Then you need to type in the string to look for and initiate the search. And for this program we're going to get the directory name using the folder browser dialog. And if a directory isn't specified we need to have a default directory specified at, at form load time so that we won't get an error that there is no directory. Uh, the process involves getting an array of all the files in the uh, directory via their directory info uh, which gets a directory info array via the uh, get files method of directory info. It's a process we've seen a number of times in the past uh, if you've been following my videos and then we iterate through the file info array via for each loop searching each string using a index of string function and you can have an optional to upper string function if you want to make the search case insensitive all this will be a lot clearer when we start looking at the actual code this is the form we use in order to do the search and the directory uh, already has pre-specified a C colon in it. And if you want to change the directory you want to look in, which you probably will, you press the browse button at the end of this directory field. And you notice there's something kind of different about this directory text box. And that's that it's grayed out and it, when you're running it, if you try to type something in it, it won't work. And the reason for that is down in the uh, properties pane and the let's see well I don't have it specified select like that down in the properties pane you notice the read only is changed to true it defaults to false so this is a read only field you can't type into but that doesn't mean you can't change it you can change it by clicking on the browse button and using the folder uh, browser dialog in order to change it and then in phase two we have the uh, file name string that we type into this uh, box here and then initiate the search with the search button and the search results appear in this search uh, results list box which is called LBX results so if we look at the phase one browse button uh, this event handler basically instantiates a folder browser dialog called FBD and then it pops the dialog up with the show dialog and checks that the user actually did select a directory by checking for the dialog results dot OK and if he did find a directory a very important step is we set an internal uh, variable called str search directory to the selected path from the FBD uh, and then we also select the, uh, this we also set the text box the read only text box to this selected directory path and this local string or global uh, scope string is defined up here at the top of the file and gets used later on and in the case of the form first loading this uh, variable gets initially set to the contents of the uh, text box which is set by the program to be C colon so we always have a default directory even if the user doesn't specify one which causes allows us not to get an error and then the phase two where something gets typed into the search text box and then we click the search button this event handler instantiates an object of directing 
directory info type called DI using the uh, search directory which has been pre-specified either by the form load or by the user uh, putting it in with the folder browser dialog and then if the search string has something in it we do the program if it doesn't just nothing happens the if never gets entered but if there is something in the search string text box uh, a local variable within the if block actually a block local variable called str search string gets set to the value that's in the text box uh, the list box is cleared via listbox.items.clear method and then we iterate through all the files that we got via the get files uh, method and make a comparison of the whether the substring is in that string using the index of and you'll notice I also have a two upper before the index of which changes the uh, file name string to, to all upper case and then within the search string I have a two upper as well so both uh, strings get changed to upper case which makes it a case insensitive search they're both uh, upper case so whether or not part part of the string is upper case and part lower case will still get a match if there is no match a minus one gets returned so the uh, the if statement basically says if we didn't get a minus one then we did get a match so use the uh, items dot add to add the current file name to the uh, results list box and then finally we just clear the text box and uh, refocus the to the text box so the cursor gets put back in the text box so we're ready to search for another string well if we save this and compile and run it we can uh, initially do a browse for a directory and say I go to uh, computer Sarah and one interesting thing it might be to look for is uh, actual videos that I'm making so that would be in class and videos and say OK and you notice that directory gets put in the read-only uh, directory text box which also sets the global string that's going to get concatenated or that's going to get searched for with the directory info and now if I say search for dot avi and click search it basically finds everything since all my initial videos are all AVIs but if we wanted to look for something more specific like uh, say HTML and do a search see it only finds two files and even though the HTML are uppercase the two upper allows it to uh, find it in a case sensitive manner and things you might want to add to this is searching the contents of the file to look for strings within the file which the original grep does or you can recursively look at subdirectories which the original grep does with a switch that says look at subdirectories and the way to do that would be to use a recursive algorithm such as I did in one of my videos I can't remember which one it is but if I do recur and do a search uh, I see it was uh, C sharp edge 84 uh, C sharp size of directory part 2 recursion this will show you how to rewrite this function so that it will do a subdirectory recursive search so you see how useful grep is a practical demonstration. Well I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot and don't forget to subscribe.